Well, we have an explosive weather week on the horizon with a lot of changes on the way, a big storm that's going to blow up as it moves off to the east. This dynamic storm will threaten the Great Lakes, the east coast as well, with the season's first snowfall for some. And we're also going to pick up some heavy rain that's going to be fueled by what's going to be left of Sarah. And a parade of Pacific storms are going to continue to pound the Pacific Northwest. This is going to bring more rain and snow here and heavy mountain snow at that. There's something really brewing for everyone. So in this video, we're going to break down the biggest weather events that you need to know about as we go through the weekend and heading uh, into next week. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. I'm Travis Roberts. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for coming by. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist. If you're wondering who the heck are you? Well, and uh, thanks for stopping over. And a lot of folks are subscribing. I do appreciate that. We just rolled through 10,000 subscribers, so I do appreciate it very much. All right. There's uh, what's left of Sarah here spinning across really the Caribbean, kind of close to the Yucatan here. Across the East Coast, some low clouds here in and around the Great Lakes. Some of this will start to clear out with some rain and, and snow here across the West. And we're watching our next storm pile into the Pacific Northwest. That's going to bring our next round of extremely heavy snow, especially once you jump above 2,500 feet. Those snow levels are going to start to drop too, so maybe a foot up to two feet of snow possible across parts of the West. Take a look at this. Uh, this is an experimental graphic from the National Weather Service. It kind of looks out. This is the risk of heavy snow, November 23rd through 29th. Notice now they're highlighting at least this area, the 23rd through the 25th, but specifically right here, downwind of uh, the Great Lakes here, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, also into the Appalachian Mountains here of Pennsylvania, West Virginia. And I'd go ahead and argue parts of Western and Southwest Virginia. And then as you head back across the West, another chance of snow. This is outside of what we're seeing right now. So multiple rounds of snow, thanks to a big amplified weather pattern that's starting to set up here in the mid and upper levels. Let's take you through the weekend. And I wanna show you this really setup as we head into next week, because this will be critical for where the snow falls. It's gonna be a different setup too. A dynamic storm that has a lot of energy with it. And in fact, I'm going to show you that energy in just a moment. But two players. First is this one. And then the second one would be back here. This is going to form our cutoff low. We're going to have a strong jet streak here on the south side of that. That's going to cause that low to start to dig, if you will. So you can imagine the bottom of that trough rounding out. And the best way really to look at that is here on this map. There comes your strong energy here. That jet streak swinging through clearly faster than it is here on the north side right so what happens your system starts to dig get it it's pulling down further to the south it's getting deeper and deeper and then this upper level wind streak here what's what we call a jet streak will race to the south and then curve back to the northwest the strong area of low pressure will develop it'll get stacked and now we've got a cold setup here underneath that cold pool of air is where you could see some snow and this air somewhere around seven to eight thousand feet could be at or below zero so if you get underneath that it's easy to see how while it may not be cold now it could quickly cool down enough to see some snow and this is one heck of a storm too that really wraps up by the end of the week this would bring some snow shower activity underneath this and once this cold pool of air moves out you get some ridging here you may actually go back over to rain because you're cold air isn't being connected from the north it's that upper cold pool that's just bowling through so to speak let's break it down on the surface map a little more we'll go day by day with some of the latest models that have come out here today on saturday as we move through the weekend still dry across the east again the clouds will start to lift out here across the great lakes and the ohio valley and the appalachians we've got return moisture back into texas with rain showers and the snow will be really heavy as we head into sunday across the pacific northwest the rain will be heavy too maybe even some flooding possible with the rain. And then that snow pushes into parts of Idaho, western Montana, also into the Canadian Rockies. And some of the snow tries to slip south into parts of northern California. There will be some snow here, but the heaviest snow clearly will be north of that. A strong area of low pressure gets going by Monday. This is going to bring some heavy rain from the Gulf Coast. It's going to push moisture north all the way close to the Great Lakes here, straight up the Mississippi. And this low will continue to deepen. It's going to stop strengthening by the time we get to about Tuesday or Wednesday. And then now we've got more of a, a, a gulf connection of moisture streaming north out ahead of our trough, which is now building into the west. Speaking of the west, another storm slamming into the Pacific Northwest by Wednesday. That atmospheric river is ramped up again with more rain and heavy mountain snow. And that snow across the west, it will get heavy at times. In fact, if you look at those snow totals, not just what? 
this weekend and then into Tuesday and then another round that actually this gets a little concerning. Maybe by Wednesday or Thursday, your snow levels start to go up. So now you're raining on top of some snow. So flooding could be an issue before those snow levels crash back down heading into uh, next weekend. But look at these numbers across the Pacific Northwest from British Columbia down into Northern California. Some places, I mean, that's a 68 inch run there on that particular model. That's the GFS from this morning. If you go back last night, I mean, it's not a lot different of anything that's showing 80. So that onshore flow is legit here. Feet and feet of snow into the mountains and not just here, but into the Air Mountain West too, in parts of Idaho, Montana, even in parts of Wyoming. We'll see some heavy snow here. All right, back to where we were. This is uh, heading into Wednesday. Your trough now digging in here across the central United States. Remember that strong jet streak will be rounding the bottom of that upper low, cutting it off as it digs further south. And once that happens, you start to dynamically stack your low pressures. On the east side of that, you'll likely have a strong storm forming, and that low will really start to deepen. And we will likely dynamically cool the atmosphere. The storm will basically create its own cold air, and we could see rain quickly flip over to snow. I'm not going to get hung up on the exact details or exactly where this storm is going to go, but this is pretty close. It's getting better and better with some of the agreement. You're seeing consistency run after run. The GFS is colder, though, than the European. That's very typical, but I think this could bring a round of some heavy snow for somebody. It's looking more likely here again into the Appalachians of Pennsylvania, down to West Virginia, maybe even parts of Virginia. Not out here towards Richmond, though. Not here along the big cities. I think it's just too warm. But back here into the interior areas, snow is looking likely. And there could be some lake effect snow behind this, too. You're not going to have a west-southwest setup like this off the lakes. And if anything, your, your winds are going to be coming in out of the north. So some lake-enhanced snow. And then this tries to retrograde back to the west as we head toward Monday and Tuesday. But that's pretty far out. This is the European, just for comparison's sakes. Very similar looking as we head through now, what, Wednesday? There's your trough. There's your strong winds. Storm really getting going here around the Great Lakes. And there's going to be a lot of wind with this storm, no matter where it goes. So just get ready for that. European also dynamically cooling things here across northern Indiana, northern Ohio. And then it swings that upper low down into the Appalachians as we head into Thursday and Friday. And that could bring that heavy snow. In. And it is warmer, right? The European showing a warmer solution. Yesterday's European was was definitely a little bit colder than this. You can see a little more snow. I wouldn't say it's trending warmer by any stretch. These models will go back and forth, but the idea is still, there's a closer look at the European. It's still cold enough for snow underneath that cold pool of air, and it could drop a quick thump of snow. And notice how it goes from snow to a little bit of rain on the back end as now your cold pool moves here on Friday. A quick look at the West. We've, we've already looked at the totals out there, but I want to push this out even further because there's another storm that may actually move in a little bit further down the road and drop some heavy snow, at least our first chance of some decent measurements of snow into the Sierra as we head into, what, the 28th and the 29th. Still some time to go before we get there. A closer look at the central United States. There comes the rain on Monday. That moves north into Monday night. Strong winds out ahead of this, out of the south and west. That'll warm our temperatures up from Louisiana all the way north into Michigan with a strong southerly flow out ahead of this area of low pressure. And then a front will move through. Temperatures behind this will start to drop as we move into Wednesday and Thursday. And there could be some snow on the northern side of this up into Minnesota. Some light snow showers and flurries here. But your heaviest snow at this point looks like it would be off to this, uh, to your south and east over across parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and areas a little bit further to the east that we've been talking about in this video. So get ready. I think there is some snow on the way. It's looking more and more likely today, Saturday, November 16th. That's when we're recording this. So clearly subject to change. There's some time to go, but this is definitely looking different than what we've seen lately. The upper level pattern, looking beyond this, if you're wondering what's going on, I do want to show you. Notice how there's not this huge connection of cold air. What we're seeing is this cutoff low. This right here is spinning off of this trough across the west. Again, I showed you that jet streak that swings through through the southern side of this. That really helps the low get cut off. We've also got some strong ridging above this. So that blocking pattern is keeping actually some of the cold air from moving much further to the south and reinforcing with this. So we've got just this isolated cold pocket of air spinning around as your polar vortex has really been busted up across the Arctic. 
it shows some signs that it may start to strengthen back as we head toward the end of the month. And that may actually cause that cold air to start to build up again. There you go. For the next time it breaks off and moves south. When will that be? It's really hard to say, but I'll be watching it and I hope you'll come back. All right. Have a great Saturday. See ya.